We are in Malibu today with the all new 2024 Toyota Tacoma. There has been tons of buzz about this fourth generation of the iconic mid-sized pickup truck and we at Cargers have contributed to that buzz gladly, bringing you previews and shorts galore. But now we're finally getting to drive it and I hope that you are as excited as I am. One reason that I'm really excited about this is that my dad used to have a 2002 Tacoma and when I found out that I got to come along on this drive program, the launch, I texted him about it and he said that Tacoma was one of his favorite cars he has ever owned. Personally, I really liked driving it in those summers when I was home from college, partly because I just felt really cool driving a truck. But Tacoma has a really special place in my heart and I'm super excited to see what's changed for 2024. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I remember exactly what it was like driving that 2002. I didn't know that much about cars back then, but I would bet that a decent portion of people watching this are currently driving first gen or second gen Tacomas and interested in what's new for this generation, partly because Toyota has really earned that reputation for longevity, partly because Tacoma fans, Toyota fans in general, are a serious bunch, not to be trifled with. So we will not be doing any trifling today. What we will be doing is driving several different trims. So this is gonna be a little bit of a different style from us, maybe jumping from vehicle to vehicle, we'll see. First of all, this is a ground up redesign. So the Tacoma now sits on the same platform as the Sequoia and the Tundra and the Land Cruiser. This is actually the first time that the Tacoma has shared a platform with Tundra. But Toyota says that they're, they don't expect that's going to eat into the Tundra sales at all. Tacoma and Tundra are still very different vehicles. Now, the Tacoma has a new boxed steel ladder frame. It's got a new coil spring multi-link rear suspension, which we're getting to experience right now in this TRD Sport. Other news, Tacoma is now all turbo all the time. Every trim that I'm driving today has the iForce 2.4 liter turbocharged engine that makes up to 278 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque. That is a far cry from what you got in the old base engine of the outgoing Tacoma. That was 159 horsepower and 180 pound-feet of torque. There's also an available iForce Max hybrid powertrain that makes significantly more power. It's available for some trims and it's standard on TRD Pro and Trail Hunter, but because this particular drive program is focused on the gas iForce engine, we're not gonna see those today. One thing that Cargo's expert reviewers have called out about the old Tacoma was the noise that you get from behind the wheel. And I'm still getting a fair amount of wind noise, which is not atypical for a truck being up a little bit higher fair amount of road noise and I can definitely hear the whistle from the turbo but Toyota did tell us that every trim even the base trim has active noise cancellation unless you get the manual transmission so yes there is still a six-speed manual available hooray We're obviously not driving that right now but hopefully later today in the meantime, what we're experiencing right now is the eight-speed automatic. So instead of the old six-speed automatic, we've now got an eight-speed, and I feel like the transmission is working well, moving through those gears nicely. Right now, you're seeing me slow down, so let's talk about the brakes, which I'm liking the braking feel. Um, no complaints there. Steering, Matt called the 2023 Tacoma steering vague. I have not had any issues with it, at least in this sport trim. Took it kind of fast on some of the twisties over there in the mountains, and I liked it. I felt like it was responding the way that I wanted it to. Now, Toyota did tell us that they were very specific about trying to really differentiate between the trims. They all have their own tuned suspension, all kinds of different features. They really went hard on trying to make sure that each trim had everything it needed for a particular customer. So this sport trim is really meant to be sport tuned and I was pretty lucky to have that on the curves. I think it's doing a really good job. Now that we're getting out of those stop and goes, we can show you acceleration. So there it is. So maybe a little bit of turbo lag, but the acceleration is definitely better than it was before. It's certainly not an inordinate wait time there gets where you need it to go. And when I was driving this TRD Sport on the highway earlier, I had no trouble with passing speeds. Going from say 55 to 70 to get around somebody was totally fine. I talked a little bit about the steering and the braking feel. 
now we're back on the twisties, which is super fun for getting to enjoy that steering. Electric power steering is now standard for the Tacoma, which is not that surprising. It seems like every vehicle is headed that direction and it does allow for some additional safety features for the Tacoma, which it didn't have before. We will get to that. Disc brakes are also now standard for the Tacoma lineup. They can be different sizes depending on the trim. Now, even though it's hybrid only, I do want to mention the Trail Hunter trim because it's really cool. It's basically a factory prepped overlanding rig. Comes with an old man emu suspension from the factory. This is the first time that Toyota has partnered with old man emu from ARB. So a lot of Tacoma owners would have made that change themselves, but now you can get it directly from the OEM. Now, I mentioned earlier that the trims are differentiated by suspensions. Another example of that is the limited trim, which I did drive earlier. That's the only one that has the adaptive variable suspension because it's top trim meant to be more comfortable. And it is, you really do notice the difference. You're not gonna mistake it for an SUV, but it is significantly comfortable. It just feels like a comfortable truck, not a comfortable car. The interior of the Tacoma has changed significantly for 2024. It's beefier and blockier than the old one was, which is not a bad thing. I mean, it is a truck, so if it felt delicate, that would not exactly inspire confidence. But overall, it just seems a lot more built for durability in terms of the style. The example I was going to give you was gonna be the shift lever. I've been driving the automatic all day and it's really sort of squared off much bigger than it used to be. Obviously, I'm now sitting in the manual, so I can't use that as an example maybe we can put up some b-roll but what I can show you is the dash this is another good example of what I mean it's much more geometric the lines that used to delineate the different areas were pretty organic and kind of soft now they're super squared off they're super blocky it's like the difference between looking at Boston City streets on a map and looking at a New York City grid of streets on a map it just feels very planned and purposeful the last Tacoma was not exactly known for its seat comfort. Matt said on this very channel just a few weeks ago that this one is a lot better. He felt that it was more car-like, that he was able to stretch his legs out, he liked this thigh support. Now, I'm going to agree with him for the most part, but I've been in a bunch of Tacomas today. I like these seats. These feel great. I really hated them in the SR5 that we were just driving, and that's really because of how difficult it was to adjust them. So. If you get the power adjustable, then I would say seats are great. We've got these mall E patterns, this grid pattern in different spots inside the door here on the side of the console. That's to make it easier to attach various accessories. And there are a lot of accessories available straight from Toyota for the Tacoma. For the four door double cab models like I was driving earlier, Toyota tells us that the gas powered version now has three times the storage space underneath those rear seats, which fold flat. This is the two-door extra cab on this SR5 trim. This is a new configuration for Toyota, so there are no more jump seats back there. Instead, there's just more interior cargo space behind these full-size front seats, and they've done a lot to make that cargo space more useful. This one has a six-foot bed. There's also a five-foot. Obviously, I mentioned the two-door extra cab, 17-inch alloy wheels, and then they all have this trailing roof line, which really gives it kind of a dynamic look, almost as if the truck is in motion, even though it's obviously standing still right now. Overall, though, I would call the styling of the new Tacoma blockier, more angular, more aggressive. Like this hexagonal grille, it kind of reminds me of those mean faces that some people like to put on their Wranglers, but overall, this still has a very distinct Toyota truck look to me, which I think is a really good thing because it's a good look, not something that I would mess with. Now, I know everyone has been talking about this chin spoiler. It's a hot topic and admittedly, it does change the look a lot. I mean, just completely changes the ground clearance visually and the whole stance, but it also changes the fuel economy a lot and that is why they've done it. Now, the only trims that don't have this are Trail Hunter and TRD Pro and those are hybrid only so you don't quite need the assist with the fuel economy. Even with this, we're getting 20 to 23 miles per gallon combined, depending on the powertrain choice. So you kind of want it to do that work, but if you really hate it and you're prepared to pay more at the pump, it's allegedly really easy to take this off with just nine screws. This is not just a far cry from my dad's 2002 Tacoma. This is also a pretty big improvement over the third gen. This one has the upgraded 14 inch touchscreen. There's an eight inch standard. I think it looks great. You know, the graphics are sharp, it's responsive, it works well. I do have to say my videographer and co-pilot for the day does not like it so much. He feels that it's too big without any added benefit and just blown up and basically just kind of makes it a little bit harder to read. 
Is that right? Did I get that right? Yeah, you got it. Yeah. All right, great. Now there is a USB-C port right here around the side and others scattered throughout the cabin. We've got three up front and two in the back seat. If you have a back seat, the old Tacoma did not have USB ports in the back at all. So that's a cool thing. I really like the position of this wireless charging pad up here. I like the 12.3 inch driver information display. Maybe the coolest feature in this one, because we have the 10 speaker JBL sound system, that means we also have, as part of that system, if it will come out, there it goes, this removable Bluetooth speaker. So it functions as part of the system or you can take it out and use it independently. It's water resistant and it's supposed to operate for up to six hours. Another new feature for the Tacoma is the set of three auxiliary buttons down here, similar to what we've seen in, for example, the F-150 Raptor. That helps make it super customizable. There is also a lot of towing specific tech. And of course, I don't have a trailer right now, so I can't really show that for you, but available options include trailer backup guidance with straight path assist, panoramic view monitor, and if you're using the integrated trailer brake controller, the blind spot monitoring system can keep an eye on blind spots for compatible trailers as well. Speaking of blind spot monitoring, that is not standard on the Tacoma and neither is rear cross traffic alert, but the Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 suite of assistance features is standard. Now the standard adaptive cruise control has four distance settings now instead of three and new features for the Tacoma include road sign assist, lane tracing assist, and proactive driving assist. First two are probably pretty obvious. Proactive driving assist uses a combination of radar and cameras to sort of chime in on your speed, your braking, your steering as you're heading into curves if it deems it necessary and thinks you could use a little help sort of staying on the road. The time may come when Toyota loses a little bit of its dominance in the mid-size pickup truck segment, but if that happens, it is not going to be this Tacoma's fault. It's still trucking right along, it's still excelling where it needs to, and now it's got the tech and comfort updates to help it answer those recently redesigned rivals like the Ford Ranger, the Chevy Colorado, and the GMC Canyon. Base MSRP for the 2024 Toyota Tacoma is $31,500. Now the most expensive one I have seen today was the limited trim. That has a starting price of $52,100 before options and destination. We don't yet know about top trims like the Trail Hunter and the TRD Pro, those hybrid versions. Pricing is yet to be announced. We'll definitely let you know when we have that info, so make sure you're subscribed to this channel. In the meantime, you can head over to cargurus.com to read full written reviews and shop for a great deal on this or any of its rivals.